hello youtube welcome back to this uh, series in our my tutorial in our uh, flask uh, mongodb integration uh, we are building a simple to do app so in this tutorial we're going to go ahead and actually build our flask forms that will enable us to take the user input and then be able to save it in the uh, into our mongodb database okay so we're going to be using flask uh, wtf so if you remember we installed the module a library called flask uh, wtf so we're going to be using that library in here to create our flask form so let's get started so i'm going to open up my visual studio code so i'm in my project directory and my virtual environment is activated so make sure you have that set up and then i'm going to open up my visual studio code or any editor that you are comfortable using and then let's get started so we're going to go into our forms dot Py, uh, py file here and then what you're simply going to do in you're going to now import a certain library so i'm going to import flask uh, underscore w wtf so from flask wtf you're going to be importing importing a uh, flask form and then you're also going to say from uh wt wt forms you're going to be importing uh, uh importing the string field you're going to be importing the text field you're going to be importing the select field and also going to be importing the submit field okay and also from uh from wtf forms dot validators so you're going to be importing uh data required valid so now that we have all that imported let's go ahead and actually create a class and this class is going to be our form our actual form so we're going to have a class here called to do uh form you're going to inherit inherit from flask form so this form is going to have a couple of fields so it's going to, going to the the first field is going to be the name field and it's going to be a string uh, a string field so it's going to be a string field and this string field is going to have a, the label as name and then you're going to have a valid data and it's going to be a list of valid data and the only valid data that you're going to have is uh, data required so data required valid data will make sure that this field uh, this field is filled or else the form will throw an error okay make sure that you call it you don't just pass it in Okay, so now we also have a, a description and the description is going to be a text field so a text field and then it's going to have a name called uh, a label called description so description and then it's going to have a, a set of validators and the only valid validator that you're going to pass in here is data required validator again make sure that you call that okay and then you have completed uh, completed field and uh, this is going to be it's going to be a uh, a select field so we're going to pass in select field and then you're going to pass in the label as uh, completed and then you're going to pass in 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 here uh, a choices so we have a, a group of choices and it's going to be a list of tuples the first one is going to be false and it's going to have a value of uh going to attach a value of false to it so sorry i pressed the wrong key so i'm going to have a value of uh, false attached to it so this is actually false and then i'm going to have another tuple here it's going to be a uh, true and then this value attached to it is also going to be uh, true so now that you have that setup i'm going to now pass in a validator for this so i'm going to pass in validator so validators is going to be a list of validator and then validator is going to be the data required validator then finally i'm going to have the submit button and this is going to be a submit button field and it's going to be a uh, add uh to do that to be the label only so that's simply how to create a flask form so we have a form with three fields uh, the name field the description field the completed field and then the submit button so now that we have that let's go into our our routes.py here so in here i'm going to create another uh route so i'm going to call it app.route and i'm going to call it for uh, uh for slash add underscore to do and in here i'm going to have a function called add uh, underscore to do and what you're simply going to do here is uh, return sorry make sure i get that right so we're going to just simply uh, return a template so return uh, render uh, render template render template so render template so render template and i'm going to pass in a template called add underscore to do dot uh, html now we don't have this template i'm going to create it right right now here i'm going to create it i'm going to call it add underscore to do dot html okay great so now instead of this template you're going to go into our views and then copy this whatever we have in here because you're going to have something very similar and then paste that in there so going back to our routes uh into our routes you're going to pass in that form into our into our 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 template okay so make sure that you import it from here so you have to say from dot forms import to do form so and then you're going to now pass it to our template so form equals to uh, form great so now that we have that set up we can go back to our to do's here uh sorry our to so do going our to do now is to uh render the form in here so that the user can be able to view the form so i'm just going to create a div tag here and instead of this div tag i'm going to have a form tag and this form tag we're going to leave the action to be empty make sure that it's empty or else you will get 
these errors okay so the form method is going to be post okay so now that i have that i'm going to go ahead and actually include something known as a csrf token now we need we need this for your form to be able to work so remember in the previous draw we also included the secret field the secret uh, key right so this is very very important so if you didn't include this make sure that you go back and include it or else your form uh, won't work okay so make sure that you have that there so what you're still going to do here we're going to say form dot uh the cs uh, rf uh, underscore token so csrf stands for cross side request for jerry token which is a form of attack that hackers use to get uh to uh, to attack form uh form fields okay so make sure that you have that in there for your data to be protected okay so we're going to have a field set and this field set is going to have a class and the class is going to be of type form dash uh group okay form group okay so now that we have that there in our field set you're going to have a legend and the legend is simply going to be uh we're going to say add uh add uh to do just like that so in there now that we have that you're going to go to, to display our form in here so i'm going to create a, a, a form a div i'm going to call it from the give it a class of form group sorry this actually form group make sure i get the spelling right so form group and this uh instead of this div what you're going to do now is going to render our form so i'm going to pass in here i'm going to pass in form dot name dot uh label so i'm going to pass in my form label here and i'm going to give it a class and at least how you give it a class and the class is going to be a uh, form dash uh form control just like that and that's how form control dash uh label okay that's how you you specify that there and then you're now going to now display the form field itself so this is the form label now you're going to display the form field okay so i'm going to say form dot name and then you're going to pass in a class and the class is going to be a uh, form dash uh, control and then you're going to uh, pass in just a uh, form control okay form control just like that and then we can go and actually save this so i'm just going to save this for now and then um, in here on our route you're returning this template and you have passed in the form so we can go back into our server so into our terminal and then uh, in here you can just run that again so i'm going to say python and then run.py and then uh, start our development so, so i'm going to open up this in my url and then i'm going to now go ahead and actually uh, go to uh, a forward slash add underscore to do and then if you hit there you can see we have that form right there okay so now that we have that form there everything is set and everything works uh, as expected so great so now that we have that uh, we can also move in here and you can see now our form field now what happens in case our form has an error so now that's what that's what we'll do in case our form has an error i'm just going to cut this for now uh, we're going to check if our form has an error. We want to be able to display that error to the user because with our current setting, our user won't be able to see the errors or in case any error occurred. Okay, so I'm just going to go past, uh, enable the user to be able to, to view that error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if uh, form dot name the dot errors, okay, and then I make sure that I end that uh, that for over there. So I'm going to say um, and uh, for okay so in here i'm going to now also pass in here in case there is an error what we'll do is we'll, we'll we'll display our form okay so we'll display the form the form field but the class will be uh we'll add with another class called uh, is uh sorry this is going to be is uh invalid so we're going to pass in the in is invalid bootstrap class and all these are bootstrap classes okay so if you don't know about bootstrap again this is not a tutorial about bootstrap so you can uh, just go and read research about it online it's actually very fa fairly uh, simple to understand so we're going to display the form field with having an uh, invalid uh, class which is going to be that red output that red uh, coloring on the form uh, on the form uh, field uh, form border form like form field border now below it you're going to now iterate and display the error that occurred okay maybe the user didn't uh, fill in anything or something like that so we're going to display that error to the user so we're going to say for error uh, in form dot name uh, it's actually form dot name dot errors so if for this all those errors you're going to iterate and then uh, display that error so i'm going to end that for blo block here so what instead of here what we're going to do is you're going to write a div with a class of invalid feedback and then this is a bootstrap class so it's going to now give that red uh, red reddish colored text okay so invalid feedback so great so now and then you're going to now just uh, print out the error here so going to uh, this say span and then in here you're going to now display the error to the user okay so great so now we're going to say uh, error just like that just like that we have that there so great so that's all we need to display that error so i'm going to copy this and duplicate it a couple of times now before uh, what if there was no error so we're going to have another else here so we're going to say uh, passing an else block and you're going to say else 
if there's no error what you're simply going to do is you're going to display the form the form field but without the invalid uh, bootstrap uh, class okay so it's going to display the form field right there so i'm just going to display the form field but without the invalid uh invalid uh invalid uh, feed uh, invalid uh, is invalid class from bootstrap okay that's all we need for our form so let's just go back in here uh, to our page and then try to refresh this now uh, we got back an error so and for uh, and if okay so we are expecting an end if somewhere so uh and for okay we, this is supposed to be end uh, if not in for so make sure that you refresh this again now you can have that uh, is fine over there so now this is going to be the same thing that you're going to repeat for all the other fields so i'm just going to copy this it's going to be similar for the description field and it's very going to be also similar for the for the choice field it's going to be a bit different okay so from the description is field is going to be similar and for the choice field is going to be a bit different okay so uh, for the form for, for the choice field you can also just re uh, repeat the same thing it will also be fine and it should also work just like that okay so just forget forget forgive me about the formatting for now you can always format it later on if you have time okay but let's go ahead with the video and then uh, keep the video to be short okay so i'm going to have another class here called uh, form uh, dash group and then this is going to be uh that's we're going to be displaying our pattern so i'm going to say uh form dot submit submit uh that's all and then we're going to specify the class this is going to be a bootstrap button so we're going to say uh btn btn uh dash outline uh dash uh info there's a, a bluish bootstrap button okay so we'll go back here then refresh this you can see we have our button right there so in this thing i'm going to give it a bit of margin so i'm going to imagine top of so I'm just going to refresh that and you can see now our button is now properly uh, positioned. So now that you have added a margin or uh, a margin or uh, margin top to our button, a margin top of three, now our uh, forms are properly uh, displayed, in, right? So uh, properly displayed. So one thing you can notice is that you have, re you have just copied and pasted, but we didn't actually change the value. So let's go ahead and actually change those values. So uh, this is going to be for the first one. That's fine. For the other ones, you're going to change this name. You're going to change it to another thing. Okay. So I'm just going to do the multi-select tool, select all of that, and I'm going to change this one to be a uh, description so description uh, is one of the uh, attributes of uh, uh, attributes of this form right so the description and then i'm going to exit that and then here i'm going to change this one to be uh, i'm going to change this one to be so let me just exit that for now i'm just gonna change this one to be uh, completed so it's gonna be completed just like that and then i exit that uh, multi-select tool and then uh, in here i'm just going to refresh this so you can still have uh, our, our, our data right there so it's going to be uh, a select field like this and then uh, it's going to be like that so that's basically it for for our for today's tutorial so in the next tutorial we'll continue working on this form and we'll uh, we'll, we'll uh, it's actually not uh, actually showing the drop down arrow so i don't know why that's happening so uh, in the next row we'll actually fix all of that little bugs and then we'll move on from there so that's basically it for this tutorial so that everything works fine the description and then the completed and we can now do the submit and actually nothing actually happens so if i just type in some random thing here and then do this we get back method not allowed and all of this will be fixed in the next tutorial so guys thanks for watching uh, if you enjoyed this too so far give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't already thanks for watching i'll uh, see you in the next one keep safe